Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working on adding push notifications to our app and testing them locally. If you're ready to learn more, keep watching the video. Let's get started. So here we are in our brand new Xcode project. The first thing we need to do to get started with push notifications is to actually ask the user for permission to send them notifications so that they can be able to receive them. So let's start by replacing the content in our VStack with a button that asks the user for permission to send them notifications. And to do this, we will use the UN user notification center dot current dot request authorization for an alert badge and sound. Now we're not going to use that closure, so it's okay to just leave it blank and empty for now. And with that small amount of code, we are actually ready to go ahead and ask for permission to send push notifications from the user. So let's go ahead and let's run our simulator. And we will request push notifications and we will click allow. All right, and we're already ready to move on to our second step. So the next step for this project would be to create a new empty file. So let's go here, search for empty and we just want an empty file. There we go. And let's call this file sample push.apns. That's Apple Push Notification Service. Now this file takes a plain JSON object. I'll add the link in the description so that you can learn more about how to build this out your, yourself. And if you want to customize it, we can do that too. But for now, we'll just add a simulator target bundle and then our bundle ID will go here and to get our bundle ID we go back to our main project we go over here to our signing capabilities and we can copy this line right here with our bundle identifier and then bring it back and paste it into here then the next object is a APS and then inside of there we have an alert and the alert takes a title this is a test notification title there we go and the next property we want to we want to pass is a body property this is a test notification body. There we go. And with that, we are actually ready to test out this push notification. So let's run our simulator again. We'll move our app to the background. And then we will drag and drop our sample push notification. And as you can see, we've already got our sample push notification here. Then when you click on it, it takes us back into our app. Now that's already a pretty good start to push notifications, just being able to test them in the simulator. But what if we wanted to do something a little bit more with our push notifications? We wanted to actually run them on the device and receive a real remote notification. Well, the next step for that would be to add a app delegate to our project. So let's go over and start that. So we'll go ahead and stop our simulator and we'll create a new file. that is a new Swift file. And we will call this custom app delegate so as to not create any naming conflicts with anything that Apple may already call app delegate. Feel free to call yours whatever you want. So we'll have a class that is custom app delegate and this class conforms to NS object UI application delegate. Now you may notice that whenever we conform to the UI application delegate, it says that it can't find it in scope. So we will, uh, we're not going to import UI kit just yet. We're going to instead import Swift UI, and we're also going to import user notifications. And that'll give us the items that we need for our app delegate here. So the first thing we want is a way to reference this app delegate to the rest of our app. And to do that, we will say this is a 
push notifications tutorial app. There we go. And then we have a few functions that we need to create. We will search for did finish and we'll choose the one of did finish launching with options. Now this is an old, a little bit older Swift method that actually handles uh, some of the lifecycle stuff for right after your app got finished launching. Okay, so starting out this function, we will say that our application is going to register for remote notifications. There we go. And then we want to say that our user notification center dot current dot delegate is our custom app delegate. So then we just want to uh, return true. Now, right now, this is going to complain because we aren't conforming to our UN user notification center delegate in this method. But don't worry, we'll cover that here in just a second with an extension to our class. For now, we'll go ahead and do the next method, which is did register for remote notifications with device token. And inside of here, we will let our token string equal our, yep, that's exactly right. So what this does, this device token comes back as a data object. And this method right here takes that device token data and converts it into a hex string, which is what we'll need later in the project. So we will go ahead and we will print out our token string. That way we can use it later in our project and we'll be able to read that from our console. But for now, let's go ahead and let's fix this uh, missing conformance for our user notification center. So let's create an extension on our custom app delegate. And let's say this is for the UN user notification center delegate. There we go. And you see our warning went away. And the first method that we want to implement is a did receive response. And in here, we're just going to print our notification title as the response dot notification dot request dot content dot title exactly and then the next method we want to implement is the will present there we go this one right here and inside of here we just want to return an array of the various things that we could do so we will say this is a badge banner list and sound. Now what these two methods do is for example this top one here where we did receive our, our response this allows us to do things such as uh, whenever a user taps on a notification it will run this method here. So for example whenever they tap the notification it'll print out the title of the notification this is also where we can initiate some deep linking stuff later and leave a comment below if you're interested in a video on that kind of content. Now this method here allows us to display content for our notifications even if we're in the app. So by default, if you're in the app and you do not include this method call, you won't see a push notification. You have to be outside of your app to see that. So adding this just gives us that little bit of extra nice user experience so that users still receive push notifications from our app even if they're inside of it. And with that done, let's jump back over into our app and let's connect our app delegate to our SwiftUI app. So to do that, we need to call a method called UI application delegate adapter. And that adapter is a var App delegate. There we go, except for it's not this one. It is a our custom app delegate, just like that. And then we can add an on appear modifier to our view. And inside that on appear, we will say that our app delegate dot app is equal to this app. All right, now the next thing we, we need to do is go ahead and add the push notification capability to our app. So we'll hop back over into our main project Click on the Signing and Capabilities tab if you're not already there, and then we will add a new capability. 
and that capability is push notifications. Now, if you've got automatic provisioning turned on, Xcode and your Apple project will handle this kind of stuff for you. But if you're dealing with something like a Fastlane, you may need to go and rerun your Fastlane project to get it to regenerate the cert certifications for these. All right, let's go ahead and let's click on our push notification console button and get started with the next step in this project. All right, now that we're in the push notification console, we've selected our app from the drop down over here and we have clicked on send in the menu options. And so now let's create a new notification. Now this notification will be called push test and we're going to send it to development. And then this is where we need that stringify JSON token that we were talking about earlier in the, in the tutorial. So let's go back to Xcode and let's run our project on the simulator. And you'll see that it printed out our stringify token down here. So let's just take that and copy it and go back to Safari and we will add our notification token here. There we go. Now this chooses that we want to send an alert by default and with the highest priority, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want for right now. And then this sends a notification with a title, a subtitle and body. Let's go ahead and change these up a little bit. Let's say we want to let our users know that they can subscribe and then we'll change the subtitle to watch great content on mobile development. And then we'll change the body to youtube.com slash at JPM tech dev. There we go. All right. And with that, we are ready to scroll back up to the top and we'll choose to, and we'll choose to send our test push notification. Before we do that, let's get our simulator back open over here. There we go. And now we are ready to test this out and let's try it out. Let's hit send. And there we go. We've got our notification over here. Now, if you try this yourself and it doesn't work the first time around, that's okay. There are sometimes some weird caching issues with the simulator. It's not perfect. It's not like running it on a real device. And so one thing that you can do to help with that is to go back over to your simulator and choose device from the menu and say select and say erase all content and settings. Now what that'll do is that'll factory reset your simulator and then you'll be able to rerun the app, re-request permissions, and you'll get your new token. And that new token uh, you'll just want to come back over, create another thing, another, and you'll want to come back over and create another new notification. And then you'll paste your new token in here and give it another shot. Uh, if it doesn't work, for example, um, let's just create one real quick. So if we paste our token back in and then we change this letter at the end, now that, that, that device doesn't exist in our account. And so let's go ahead and we'll send this. So it says the device has an invalid token. So Apple is pretty good about letting us know what's happened with our device, whether that be uh, the device token is invalid, something's messed up, or maybe it didn't go through because the device was offline. Um, if you see that the device is offline error and you're running it on your simulator, that's your cue to go back over and erase your content and settings on your simulator. So back in our Xcode project, there's one more thing that we can do to test push notifications on our device. And that is to actually use the terminal to run our push notifications. This is great if you've got anything like a unit test or an integration test that you need to run uh, automatically or with an automation tool of some sort. And you can have it actually test your push notifications for you. So going back over here to our project, we will select our sample push that we created earlier and say show in Finder. And that will display the location of that in Finder. And then we'll open our terminal window. And the command that we want to run is xc run space sim ctl space push space booted 
and then we'll take we'll do another space and a, a nice trick that you can do with terminal is if you've already got finder open you can just click and drag on the item that you want to select the path for you can click and drag that onto terminal and it gives you the path uh, without you having to type in everything so now when we run this in terminal we should see this push notification our sample push notification pop up in our simulator let's give it a shot there we go we've got our sample push notification showing up on our simulator and with that feel free to like share and subscribe and if you leave a comment just be nice about it that's all i ask thanks have a great day